so hey guys welcome back to my channel hope you are doing extremely well and this is your way your mask code this side and today we will be solving yet another problem of TOTD so today's problem is a basic one uh, in the sense of basic I mean that it is a defined problem right we don't have to think we have to know the what is the Rabin Karp algorithm for that and there is no other way right because you cannot guess what Rabin Karp advised and the algorithm is named after, named after it you have to study about it so it is Rabin Karp algorithm let's see what does it say so Rabin Karp algorithm I think that it is probably mentioned uh, because of the scientists who discovered this algorithm right this algorithm is used to search pattern search pattern as in you have been given a pattern as ABC and you have been given a text as ABC D triple D double D right you have to tell me the occurrences occurrences of pattern in the text right assume when base indexing right so let me change the text a little bit let's see if it is abc here also right so let me mark the indexes so it is index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 right all right so if i see abc is occurring at here and here correct so what are my answers my answer is assuming one base indexing it will be 1 and assuming one base indexing it will be 12 right I don't guess there are neither patterns in the text right these are the only two if you found find anyone please comment it down below okay so I have to get this as my answer so I, I know I have got many intelligent students so they will say that instead of using any other thing we will just do that move I from 0 till n minus m right y n minus m because if suppose this is length 3 right 0 1 2 right this length 3 so it can be found at maximum here right why I cannot go beyond that because if I go here I cannot possibly find ABC right so if not present so n is 14 here 14 minus 3 is 11 so I am going up till 11 so I am going up from 0 up till n minus m and if txt dot sub s here that is a substring of text from i for length m is equals to equals to that pattern push it into the vector right push it into the answer array right i say that you are correct but the complexity here is the time complexity here is o of n to traverse and o of n for sub str so o of n square it becomes pretty inefficient right so Raven Carp was a genius man. He devised an algorithm to find this answer in O of n time. Wow, how? How is it even possible? So he said assign a hash value. A hash value. What is the meaning of hash value? Hash value is something like a key value pair, a unique key. Assign a unique key. Right? So for pattern, you have A, B, C as your pattern, right? So let's assume they're alphabetical order only. Right? So let's assume it is 0. 1, 2. You can also deal with SKI values also. So I will, for the uh, versatility, I will write the code in SKI and I will uh, make you understand in the 0, 1, 2 manner, right? 0, 1, 2. He said, compute them up. That is, add them up. He said, 0 plus 1 plus 2 gives me 3, right? 0 plus 1 plus 2 gives me 3. Now, traverse this string. If I see that ABC, what is the value? 0 plus 1 plus 2, it is giving me 3. If it is giving me 3, if it is giving me 3, both of them match. If it is possible, then check for these two. Then compare these two. You see that A is equal to A, B is equal to B, C is equal to C. Yes, if all of these are same, push it. One pushed, right? Move forward. B, C, D. So B will give, give me 1, C will give me 2, th D will give me 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is, it is uh, 4, 6, right? 6 is not equivalent to 3. Move to another substring. C, D, A. C is 2, D is 3, A is uh, 0 again. 2 plus 3 is 5, not equivalent to 3, right? Move and on and on. And whenever you, whenever you encounter a 3 again, check individually if A, B, C is present. And if yes, push it into the answer. That will be checked here, right? All right. So this is your approach. Check for 3. And if not possible, and if possible, 3 is equal to 3, then check for individually all the elements, right? 
So you are decreasing your time complexity by much values, right? But what if AAD is present in your substring as mentioned here, right? Or here, two substrings with AAD. If I calculate the value for AAD, 0, 0, 3, sum is 3, equal. Now you will have to check for A, B, D, right? So it is increasing my time complexity again. It is increasing my time complexity again. So he said that the hash value here is very bland. That is very easy. Let us, let us complicate it. So how did he complicate it? He said initially A, B, C, A was taking out to be 0, B was a contributing 1, C was contributing 2. I say let's take a base. Okay, let's take a base B. Let's take a base B, B base only. I say for A, A will contribute me 0 into base to the power 0. B will contribute me 1 or let's say it is E here. So E is contributing right now A, B, C, E. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1 into base to the power 1. C will contribute, co contribute 2 into base to the power 2. And E will contribute base to the power 4. Right? E will contribute base to the power 4. What is your base now? Uh, it has been computationally proven, like mathematically it was proven, that take base as a prime number. Why prime? To reduce the chances of collapse. Like here it was happening a collapse, right? So to reduce the chances of collapse, we take base as a prime number, right? Okay. Take your hash value as their sum. And also above, take your hash value in the same manner, right? Follow all the substring, base with power 0, 1, 2, etc, etc. Okay. And then if the hash values match, then compare all the letters. If the hash value match, then compare all the letters. And if all the letters match, push it into the answer. Otherwise, sorry, move to the next substring, right? I hope I'm clear up till now, right? Now, as we introduce the power, the things are going multi-level scales, right? It is, it can be going out of the int range also. To avoid that, we will have to take a number, which we keep constantly dividing, right? Constantly dividing or taking modulo per se, for better understanding, taking modulo so as to remain the number, remain the hash value into the interval only, right? Right, so I think you're clear with them now. You're clear with the approach. Once again, I'm telling you hash value that compute the hash, compute the hash for each substring. If hash match, uh, check for the whole string, and if the string match, push it into the answer. Right, this is our whole Rabin Carp algorithm, a genius algorithm. Is if he's a, a algorithm, is okay, a genius one. And like I was shocked when I was see when I see the algorithm at first, right. And this question is very uh, important for your interviews, not for coding, but for interviews. You can clear the OA without this also, but OAs, oh, but interviews, the interviewer might ask you the question directly. So you will have to answer him in the raven kaya program. He will not take the, uh, give me the brute force, give me the optimal. No, you will, he will ask you for raven carp directly. That ask, give me the raven carp algorithm, right? Raven carp. Just understand the name, just memorize the name, right? And the algorithm associated with it. All right. Now what? Now, how should we code it? So here comes the interesting part, the implementation. And that's why you come to this video for the amazing implementation. I guess it is amazing, right? I'm just flying an arrow. If you want me to confirm that it is amazing, comment down. That is the only way you can come and connect with me, right? Because you all are not connecting with me on the Discord. That is why I have to tell it, tell it, tell you to implement just that. So my first step will be to create an answer array. Right. My second step will be to take a number which we were dividing. Let's say the number is Q. And let me assume that let, let us set it as 101. Right. Let us set it as 101. No, no matter what you can do, you can take any of them. It's just a modular thing. Right. All right. The base which we were taking the power size sector. Right. Let us take it as base as let us sign as D and let us take it as 26. Right. Our patterns length is m, our text length is m, right? We will take the hash value for pattern p for the current substring. For the current substring, the hash value of the text substring is t, right? Our fourth step will be to 
loop from 0 to m minus 2. Why? 0 to m minus 2, that is m minus 1 iterations, right? m minus 1 iterations. And we will be doing h equals to h multiplied by d percentile q. Percentile q. What will this return? h will then contain h will then contain d to the power m minus 1 percentile q. Am I right? If for each iteration, if we do this, do this thing, right? Now, our h word is initially one writer. Okay. So h is you just taking the like what we are doing is what we are doing is we are standing here, right? It is taking the power zero, power one, power two. Whenever we move this, now it is taking power zero, right? So we have to take a dynamic thing that is going with the powers, right? So do not do not compute that again and again. We are taking h as that. All right. Now, for fifth step will be to go from zero to m minus one, zero to m minus one, and calculate p and t. Calculate p and t. Right? Hash values of pattern and text. Text first substring. Right? Sixth step will be to go from zero to n minus one, n minus m, inclusive. That is zero to n minus m. Right? Zero to n minus m. And what you have to do is check if hash value of p equals to equals to t then check all the substrings and if true push it into the array otherwise move to the next substring okay move to the next substring all right then if not found what do you have to do is we have to change our hash and then return our answer See, I'm not giving you the pseudocode because the pseudocode will be very messy, very messy. That pseudocode is very messy here. I'm not able to deduce it in an easier way. So I thought that let us skip to the action part and just do the coding, which is real fun. Okay. So let's come to the coding part. Okay. So we will be declaring a vector int result, storing the answer. My Q will be 101, my D will be 26, my M will be pattern dot size. Let me make it pat for smaller things and let me make it text, okay, for smaller size, pat dot size, in 10 equals to txt dot size, right, my int P that is the initial value of hash of pattern is 0 and so is my int t is 0 right my int h is 1 right now I have to make h as power of d to the power m minus 1 percent this is d h as power percentile uh, q right for that what I will do is for int i equals to 0 i less than m minus 1 that is if you go up till m minus 2 i plus plus h equals to h star d take any little brackets and then take it with modulo okay right okay now calculate hope you are able to watch it calculate the hash value of pattern and first window of text right what we will do is for entire going from 0 going up till capital M I plus plus that is the patterns length P equals to D star P plus pattern of i i am taking the sky values here as i mentioned uh, while solving instead of taking pat i minus a i am taking the sky values here right and t equals to d star p plus txti percentile q right okay now slide now slide the pattern over text one by one that is take all the substrings possible of pattern length so for int i going from 0 i going up till 
n minus m including n minus m right including n minus m so i plus plus now we will have to first check the hash if they are equal if they are equal so if p is equal to equal to t in that case check for characters one by one right so for in j going from 0 j less than m j plus plus if txt of i plus j is not equals to pattern of j in that case break that we have found a mismatch that is not a possible substring otherwise if j has reached the end if j is equals to equals to n and this will come after outside the loop that is the loop has gone crazily correct and take it in, in j equals to zero right now if j equals to equals to m that is text and patterns are matching in that case result dot push back i plus one that is i plus one why because i am taking the index plus one that is index is one right now this if condition ends and then else condition starts now if i is less than n minus m in that case my next hash value my next hash value will be t into d star t minus txt i star h plus txt i plus m sorry this will be in the brackets Yeah, txt i plus m percentile q, right? Any problem up till now? This is just for calculating the hash values of the next substring of the next substring, right? And after this, if t has gone less than zero because of the minus here and the module here, if it has gone uh, less than zero, we'll have to increment it by q so that the module does not get modulo does not get affected. If t is less than zero, then t becomes t plus q, right? And at last, but not the least, the most important step, the difficult step, the most difficult step, I believe, is to turn the correct answer. That is it on this, right? Let's try to compile and run it. Hope it works. I know I have been taking the code slow here, just so that you understand. And let it work. GFG is slow, slow guys. Geez. I don't know what is the server error, but they are taking these things really slow. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel. Oh, there has been a mistake. What is the mistake? It is the mistake in rest.pushback. So rest.pushback line number 45. So it is instead of J, it will be only K. Typing error. Hope you will forgive my typing error. And oh, again an error. N underscore M is not. Oh, it is N minus N. So I think by chance I have not pressed the, oh, I have pressed the shift button a little longer. So, okay, working fine. No, not working fine. What is the reason behind that? What is the reason behind that? Oh, okay. I've got the reason. It is T here. Sorry for the mistake guys. Let's try to combine it now. Oh, it is working fine for combine and let's try to submit also. Hope it works. In the meantime, for the finger cross, please subscribe to my channel. See the counter is going, it will stop. Oh, it is not stopped because you are subscribed to my channel. Thank you for watching and do not forget to like the video, subscribe and do engage with me in the comment section. Whether you have liked it or not, please engage with me. Please give the feedback so that I can bring the most out of the most good out of me for the content for the YouTube and for the community. Thank you for watching. We'll meet tomorrow with a new energy and a new question. So keep watching and support me, please. Thank you. Have a nice day.